dude. I don't care. It's, it's better like this. I want this to be a mutual experience for both of us. If it wor whatever works. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to talk to the podium finishers at High Rocks, Chicago. So many of you watched the live feed. Thank you so, so much. Shout out to Bracken and Ugly Dave Claxton who made that broadcast possible in the booth. They did an amazing job. And of course, we had to speak with the winners, uh, podium finishers of this race. And this video will be the men. So let's talk to the men. It is Brent Hastard, Dylan Scott, and of course, the Hunter. Oh, here we go. Brent Hastard, I'm from just south of Kansas City. Why do they call you the land shark? I think it's an ego thing. I created it. I don't know, I just hashtag everything land shark. I feel like it's a fierce animal that doesn't live on land, so that makes it funny. What was your goal coming into this race? Do you have a time goal or a placement goal? Uh, I had a feeling, honestly, I'm just super happy. I feel like I was going for third, it's fourth. I figured I'd be in that range. And I'm just super happy to see Dylan and myself finally get on the podium and knock some of the it's time for the old to go and the new to come. I love it. I love it. So are your buddies with, uh, with them? Low key, just met him in Dallas. But like, I kind of watched him. I saw what he did and I was like, oh, wow. Maybe if I incorporate some of that into my game, it'll close some of the advantage he has. And so like, it's helped me with my endurance and the ability to keep going through station to station and not get tired. What is your, uh, what's your train? Like, what do you, do you train like an obstacle racer? What do you, what's your training deal? Uh, kind of, like, I do like 20, 30 minute circuits a lot, but then like, now I bike like 20 minutes after just because I saw him do it and I'm like, oh, I should do that. But like, I kind of consider myself like the great value version of Hunter, so, like, I don't have all the time in the world. I got three kids and a job, so like. I have three kids. Yeah, it's a handful. It's exhausting. Dude, now your stock is looking the roof with me. Yeah. I'm what, what's your best station and what's your worst station? I get stronger in the second half, that's for sure. I don't know why. I feel like the sleds are an advantage, but like, I, there's something about like after that row where I'm just like, fuck it, let's go. It's time. It's like a sprint from there. The lunges just don't hurt. I can regroup. The farmer walks, nothing to it. And then the wall balls I've been practicing, so pretty much nothing to it now either. You got to the wall balls after David, right? Yeah, he was about 33 when I got there. Did you go? How did you break up? How did you break them up? Uh, well, I got to 76, and then like I heard Dylan Scott finish, and I was like, "Damn it!" I was like, "Magida's probably at 90 or so," so I dropped it, and I was just kind of, I was ready to pout, but I knew I had a lead, so I was gonna coast. And then I picked it up, and I started going, and then they're like, "Oh, Magida's at 75," and I'm just like, "Oh, it's over." I go, "I could have done those unbroken," and I went 76, and then I finished. I should have just went all 100. Oh boy, considered the grit games. Kind of want to just go back this up in Dallas. Uh, Battle of the Lions guy has their endurance event. Like, I feel like going and taking a stab at some people that at their own game. It's not really my forte, but but yeah, just that. Just, I really kind of want to find a teammate for the Tough Mudder 24-hour race, like the team one. We, I don't know how it works exactly. I asked Nick Riker, but he said no. I was disappointed week but yeah I, I don't know something new continue due to these these are easy to train for pretty natural and i kind of want to go to boston we talked about setting the world records double dylan and i so we're thinking about doing that in boston kelly and i want to do that in boston too huh kelly and i want to do that in boston too oh no, shoot girls and boys girls double and boys records getting record, broken baby, let's do it. like you kind of shocked the world today I shocked everybody except for the people who knew me. Because? Because they see the work I put in, like on a daily basis, and I don't think they were as surprised. Um, the, the folks who I talked to before the race who were kind of close-knit with me, they were like really hyping me up, and if anything, I had to tell them like, hey, let's temper the expectations a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I put in work day in, day out. I know that my body type doesn't look like somebody who's gonna come out here and be able to like, with the sleds, move with the big guys. But uh, I took some tips from Robert Killian watching him in Dallas. I started implementing that for the sled push. I went home after Dallas and really started working the sleds. 
I don't have to squat heavy. I don't have to deadlift well. I have to move a sled back and forth. I practiced the shit out of that and it paid off. I'm, uh, I'm right up under 6'2", and I'm right around 160. So, so the man who won this race outweighs you by, what, 40 pounds? 40, 45 at least, yeah. And you came in, you came in uh, ahead of a lot of bigger guys than you. Yeah, so right behind me was Brent Hassert, who uh, he's probably 5'10", 190. And then you got Megiddo, who's probably like around 6 foot, 5'11", 195. So, I mean, yeah. But the thing is, those guys, I props to them for being able to run it that way, you know? I mean, I do get the kind of like little pixie fairy prancing around for laps because I'm so small uh, that it's just like float along. But uh, yeah, as long as I can push and move with them when it comes to the heavyweights, you know, it's all good. When I said you ate your Wheaties today, what did you say back to me? I said Cliff Bars. I said that's what I, I, I said Cliff Bars and cookies. So uh, that's what I run off of um, before Dallas. I, I was laying down and I was eating a cookie and I had a banging race. And so after that, I was like, I'm eating cookies before every race. So today for breakfast, I had some like little uh, chocolate chip finsters. I sent that picture over to the guy who runs the High Rocks Daily account. Me and him got a little inside joke on it. I'm like, bro, I got my cookies. We're about to throw down. So what are you doing next? Are you gonna do more of these? Um, I'll probably do some more of these. It, I, I will not be uh, out in August in uh, Dallas when they do it again. My very next event is going to be uh, the, the Grit Games. So I did their virtual competition and that actually really helped me in the lead up to this because a lot of my training is like long endurance stuff and then a lot of that was kind of metcon -y. It was like really bump your heart rate up. Um, it only lasted like 15, 20 minutes and so it's a good dichotomy between like two hour, three hour bike rides, 15 minute metcons. Um, and so I'll go down there and race that because I really enjoyed just the atmosphere of, of what they put out. And I mean, if you can, if you can emote like a good atmosphere from an online presence in person, it's probably going to be really fun. I want to know what you have to say to people who do look at, you know, the Hunters and Megidas and say, well, I'm not built like that, so I'd never be as good at a sport like this. What do you have to say to them? So to be honest, I would say to them, you're a little bit correct. Um, it will be beneficial for me to get bigger, like especially when it comes to the sleds and stuff. What I found is that when I was running cross country in high school and college, I was 20 pounds lighter than this. I run just as fast now, 20 pounds heavier. If I go 20 pounds up, I'm probably still gonna run maybe five seconds slower, but I'm gonna pick up that stuff. So you can be a little smaller and still hang with the big guys, but the weight helps to a degree. Back and tire. Yeah. You said you were not feeling so hot beforehand, but you're never one to make excuses. I know you're not, but yeah. you legit had some stuff going on. Can you tell everybody about your IV situation? Yeah, so I got like the stomach flu or uh, some kind of food poisoning or something on Wednesday. Like lymph nodes. Quick, quick question. Was it a burrito, a tainted burrito with some special ingredients? Uh, maybe. Horse meat with steroids in it. That's what got me. Um, that's what gets everybody. Shoot, I should have known. Uh, yeah, but basically I was up, I felt my lymph nodes go up and I was like, there's something wrong with me. And then the next day I was like, my stomach's not. And then the day after that, starting Wednesday through basically Friday, I was just shitting water the whole time to the point where I could no longer take water in like orally. I was no longer peeing and I was like, there's something wrong. So I don't like going to the doctor. So we went to an IV place. They hit me with two bags of IVs on Friday morning, and I was almost considering getting one this morning because I still didn't pee after the bags. And I was like, you know what? Like, I did all this research. My dad told me, he's like, you know, Michael Jordan won the playoffs with the 103 degree fever. He's like, you better fucking show up. So I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm going. And it was great. Like, you know, like, honestly, I was getting pushed regardless. I think the talent field has started to really catch up to me. Um, was I at my best? No. Was I tested still? entirely. Um, Dylan Scott's a really incredible athlete now. Megita came in hot in the beginning on the sleds. Brent's there and he's starting to really test the field. So, you know, we got a good pack there. Yeah, I think the sport, uh, we always love new faces. We love more people challenging the best. Um, what do you think about old, uh, old Dylan Scott, 160 pounds? Dylan Scott's impressive. I've said, I think that guy has the most room to improve. I think he just has to have to decide to improve. He's the kind of guy I study his workouts sometimes just because I'm, I'm curious. He just does these workouts that are just like a thousand reps and hours long. 
that's going to make you fit so you never get tired. I think where he's going to elevate next is if he decides like put a big block into lifting so that he can really move through all that weight. But maybe he'll keep on doing what he's doing and still get better, so who knows? When you were ahead by you know a couple of minutes, I don't know what the exact thing was, and you get to the fifth, sixth days, do you drop down a gear? Or like how, does, how do you approach that? Well, I wanted to up it and see if I could go for the world record. I don't know if this one was long, because that's the slowest I've ever done. But at the same time, I was pretty sick. Like, I don't know if you noticed, when I got to the wall balls, like, I stopped, I think, 35 wall balls in, or 39. Like, that's never happened to me. I was just so toast, I couldn't really do much. So I held back. I also didn't want to get diarrhea, so I played it very safe. I played it safe today. Yeah, I'm impressed by the women's field. I'm proud of Lauren Weeks. I'll say that much. I'm happy that she came back. It's hard to lose when you're a champion and then have somebody as tough as uh, Rachel come into the field and then she just came in and buried everybody. And I think she got a world record. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you watching. You know what else I appreciate? Patrons. That's right, the Patreon members. We are doing so much great things in the Patreon right now. You've got to get on board. We've got exclusive content. We've got behind the scenes content. We've got content before anybody else sees it. We've also got an awesome Discord going now. We've also got an awesome Strava Club going now. I wanna go ahead and thank everyone that is above the $5 and above level. That's right, I said above the $5 and above level. That's right, here we go. Here's all of them. There's an awful lot of them. Uh, thank you so, so much, all of you. You are helping keep this machine running called ORM that we all get to be a part of. I really appreciate you. I love you. I miss you. I mean it. Oh, if you want to join the Patreon, link below. Do the thing with the link in the thing or patreon.com slash obstacle racing media. Was that weird that I was scratching while I was saying that? I'll say that again. Patreon.com slash obstacle racing media or links below. Love you. Miss you. Mean it. Oh, and the women's video is coming too. Love you. Miss you. Mean it.